Hello friends, this is Scott. We're down at the Homestead Kitchen and we're taking a look at my storage rack with what's left from my garlic harvest this year. And I've got some nice ones. You know, I haven't used up all the biggest heads. So I'm going to go ahead and use these instead of go buy some at the grocery store. Again, that's what I buy is grocery store garlic to plant. It's a soft neck variety. First step though is i got to find a place to plant the, the garlic. And uh, you have to plant it in the fall because uh, it needs an overwinter cycle. So now's the time to get it in the ground. It's early October. But I've got to find the ground to put it in, and uh, Mother Nature, she has reclaimed uh, a lot of my garden beds. I've been busy with the chicken coop and other builds and haven't kept up on weeding. But uh, yeah, we've got, to, we've got to reclaim this area, and I'm going to go ahead and plant it where I planted it last year. First step, I always want to you know, set an edge <laughs> so I kind of know where I'm at on my beds. I'm going to do things a little differently this year. I usually dense plant uh, my garlic, and, uh, and this year I'm going, to do, I'm going to make it look a little nicer. I'm going to do it in rows. So... I'm going to uh, yeah, make formal beds and, uh, and try to make them look nicer and, uh, and see if I can make my garden look a little bit neater. You know, I get tons of production. And again, I had an awesome garlic harvest this year. So I'm not worried too much about the how I plant garlic in the past. Uh, I'm just going to make it look nice and try to make my garden look a little better as I'm trying to make this whole property look a little better. But first step, again, just my hori hori has got to get all these weeds out of here. And uh, again, I use kind of the no-till method. So I'm just using the hori hori to pull these weeds. But... You know, there's some weeds here that have some really deep tap roots. And you think in a, a year old bed, you wouldn't have weeds that are that, you know, tough. But uh, this particular weed is a, is a booger. So it's got a deep root structure and it kind of holds in pretty, pretty well. And yeah, it's taken a little bit of effort to dig these out. Mr. Lincoln's uh, supervising, making sure that I'm doing a good job. As you see, the weed, the roots are pretty significant. But there's some big, big weeds in here. And, uh, I'm going to highlight this particular weed. This is called a common mallow, or they call it cheese weed. I don't know why they call it cheese weed, but it's a very deep rooted, uh, as a deep tap root, and it's tough. And, uh, and the reason I'm highlighting this, uh, this weed is, is we had a tragedy in the garden today and uh, pulling out this particular type of weed, and uh, I broke my hori hori. Again, other than my compost screen, this knife, which was given to me by a friend named Marilyn, uh, was my best tool and it snapped. Uh, so those weeds are tough and uh, yeah, I'm pretty uh, pretty disappointed that, uh, that that broke. So anyway, gonna have to find me another one of those. But so I had my shovel with me, so I'm just gonna go ahead and dig them out with the shovel. And again, I've disturbed the soil a little more than I had hoped, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So this is how much room I wanted to plant my garlic bed. Again, I've, I plant a lot more than I absolutely need. Uh, and as I'm digging, I find some uh, that I missed picking this year. So there's some that are already sprouting. So I'm going to go ahead and plant those in an area that I can remember where they're at, hopefully, so I can see how they did. But first step is I'm going to throw some bone meal down. And again, it's all phosphorus. Okay, three numbers on a bag, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium is the three numbers. And the second number is all about the root structure, which is these are root crops. So I want to make sure that I put bone meal down. And again, it's just crushed up bone. First number on a bag is obviously nitrogen. Second number is, you know, the phosphorus. And the third number is, is the potassium, which is all about really the health and vigor of the plant. So this bone meal is all number two. It has no nitrogen and no potassium. So we're going to go ahead and put this down, though, because that's uh, one of the most essential ingredients uh, nutritionally for a, for a garlic to grow successfully. And it, just make sure you're uh, upwind from, from this when you're doing it because <laughs> you don't want a mouthful of bone dust. So just taking the rake and just gonna just rake it into the top level of so soil. Now, when you put bone meal in your garden, just know that it will attract your animals, uh, domestic pets, because uh, obviously they smell that bone. So try to get it covered up a little bit, uh, so it's not they're not in there digging and, and trying to eat it. <laughs> but yeah, Mr. Lincoln didn't seem too interested at this trip, so yeah, it was it turned out okay. But yeah, it's not a hard process. Just sprinkle it on top and then just rake it in. And then this this take, material takes a little while to break down in the soil. So that's another reason why I'm going to go ahead and plant in the same spot because, the you know, sometimes it takes a couple of years for, for this stuff to break down and I can still get some benefit from, from last year's bone meal that I put in here. So again, I'm trying to do a neater garden this year. I'm going to make it look nicer. So I decided to run string and actually do rows and rather than just dense plant. And uh, I did them about eight inches apart. Now here's a tool that the previous homeowner left me that uh, I didn't find a lot of tools here that were of value, but this is what I did not have. It's got a it's got a hole on one side and a little bit of a, of a, a rake on the other, and it uh, helps me you know, kind of do a nice little furrow here. Now, garlic needs to be planted about an inch deep, you know, inch, inch and a half. So I'm just doing a very light furrow just to kind of set the tone of where this row is going to be. 
And uh, this tool worked really well for that. And again, I'm just going on the side of the string. And, uh, and then again, these rows will be eight inches apart. I'm planning on planting the garlic about six inches apart, five or six. So yeah, give them a little bit more space and we'll see if I even get a better garlic harvest than I, than I usually do. But again, I'm not complaining about my, my results uh, from my past garlic because it's pretty much I always have good garlic. So here we go. Here's the 12 uh, heads that I'm just going to break apart and into, into the individual cloves. When I get done, I'll have about 120, you know, approximately 125. And then I have some volunteers that came up again that I'll have another 10 or 15. So I'll have about 135, 140 uh, heads of garlic this year, which is plenty for us. So again, just breaking them apart. And I am setting them out on the row nice and neat. And again, I'm trying to get them about six inches apart, not being exact, but I am going to have a nice straight row. And uh, maybe, you know, that'll help these these garlic uh, stay upright and uh, not flop over so much sometimes with uh, with they have a little bit more space. So we'll see how this all goes. But again, I just use, you know, this was grocery store garlic last year uh, that I planted. And, and again, this is from my harvest this year. So again, it all roots back to the grocery store, soft neck garlic. Uh, you know, I've tried fancy garlic in the past and from other areas and it didn't grow well in my garden. So I'm just, you know, I always have success with these. The only times I haven't had success was again, when I planted garlic that was not grown in, in this area. And uh, when I uh, planted too late and the garlic didn't get established. Now, when you're planting garlic, if the garlic does come up a little bit, you know, I can plant it in September too and have it, you know, the tops grow up and it won't hurt the garlic in this climate. It'll just kind of, you know, just kind of go dormant, sit there. And then when it warms up in the spring, it'll start again. Here we go with the uh, volunteers that I found and, you know, there's quite a few. So we're going to go ahead and put those in an area, you know, kind of closest uh, of the four rows that I did make. So that I hopefully I'll remember that those were the ones that I that just you know popped up in the garden after I forgot to pick them or get, didn't get to them and and I'll see how those do. But uh, again, they're spaced out nicely. And here's the most important part of garlic planting: is you've got a top and a bottom. Okay, so that is I'm going to show you right here is the root. Okay, so that is the bottom of the garlic, and the little pointy end is the top. And you want you know bigger heads of or bigger uh, cloves of garlic because they'll grow generally bigger bigger heads of garlic. So again, you push them down, root down, and uh, the soil was not totally loose, so I had to push a little bit harder than, than necessary, but all I want to do is get them in the ground, and I'm just going to take a little bit of soil and cover the tops up a little bit so that they are, they are fully planted. So again, not a hard process, but I always lay everything out first. And that way I know where everything's at before I start burying it, because uh, that, that's the biggest problem I have with the garden is if I start burying stuff, I forget where I'm at. If I have any interruptions and then I then I have a you know weird beds where I'm you know I have way too much planted in one area or not enough so so uh, yeah simple process though just push them right into into the soil and that's the bulbs that are the the cloves that I uh, they, that I had broke apart now here's the plants so I'm just gonna take the plants and do the same thing just uh, stick them in the ground I did break the tops off a little bit just so there's not so much top growth uh, but they'll be just fine uh, in the soil and if it gets cold they'll just sit there. And uh, again, if the others sprout, that's fine. Uh, again, my biggest problem with them was I planted too late and I don't think the roots got established and I had a bad crop. So, so I'm, you know, I think this will be perfect, a perfect timing for, for this garlic crop down at this elevation, about 6,300 feet. We should have a frost here in the next week, I would think. Uh, we haven't had one yet. So like always though, I always water everything in very deeply. I'm not gonna mulch right now because I want the sunlight and the warmth to get these plants established and then I will be mulching them with grass clippings or leaves or compost or other things. So anyway, try garlic. It's a very simple crop to grow. Again, you need to plant it in the fall and so you can pick it, you know, in Salt Lake area, it's about June and down at the, at the homestead, it's in July because it's a little bit, you know, shorter season down there, a little colder. So anyway, I highly suggest you give this crop a try. Thanks for watching.